Hey Matt, welcome to the NFT podcast. It's a pleasure to have you here. And how are you? I'm great, thanks. It's uh, great to be here. Wow. So it seems like you've got a long story in technology, but not just technology and in NFTs. So please start from the point that you want. Okay, well, I started back in tech in the Internet 1.0 days. This is back in the, the mid 90s. Uh, so friends and I, we started up a company called Commissioner.com. We were the first ones to put fantasy sports on the Internet. And those uh, Internet you know, 1.0 days uh, were pretty crazy. We were in New York uh, downtown, which they dubbed uh, Silicon Alley. And we just worked really hard. I mean, there were a lot of Internet companies all over, even in the same building we were in, uh, that you know, had these fancy offices and everything and spent a lot of money but had no real, uh, had no real new model or any type of business model or any plans for generating money at all. It was just, it was just ridiculous. But we just, uh, uh, we just stuck to the fantasy sports and it took off and we sold that in 99 to uh, CBS Sports Line, which is now CBS Sports, and they're running our uh, fancy game still to this day. I wow. Mean, a little modified from back then. Uh, so since then, just been involved in various you know, tech, entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial projects, uh, got involved in, uh, in the blockchain about, about 2015, uh, got involved in a VR AR company 2016, got uh, involved in uh, NFTs pretty much uh, last year and just really uh, immersed myself in the, in the NFT space, uh, put out the official uh, Three Stooges NFTs, uh, got, some, uh, got an NFT for uh, college basketball player Trey Mann, who's entering the NBA draft this year. So uh, that's going to be cool. That's coming out soon. So just really, I mean, dove in, did a lot of research. I'm also uh, an attorney as well. I uh, was practicing entertainment law before, uh, before the internet company back in the 90s. And just really, you know, just really been fascinated by the technology of NFTs, uh, the legal aspects surrounding NFTs. And, uh, and, Q, and Q Harrison, Terry, and I were writing a book, the NFT handbook for Wiley Publishing, which will be out uh, this October. And you can actually uh, pre-order that on Amazon if you like. So check that out. Definitely. With all the links that we are going to see here in the description. But so coming back, you are not just creating something NFTs. You are bringing on like the entire metaverse uh, with, all the, with all, the, all the skills and all the, all the jobs and companies you are involved in. Um, Thank you, thank you from the entire NFT community for this. And I want to come back in a few years in history, also connected to your first uh, uh, company, Commissioner.com, and also connected to something that you, both and Mark Cuban, said in the um, podcast that uh, I was hearing the other day of Gary Vee, Marketing for the Now. You say that NFTs now, it's like the internet in 1995. And that's something that really got my attention. So what does it mean? Okay, so the NF so NFTs now, there's a lot of, I mean, it was similar with, the, with blockchain uh, and cryptocurrencies as well. I mean, there's a lot of FUD. There's a lot of negativity. There's a lot of doubt. Uh, you, hear, you hear a lot that NFTs are a scam. And I would just, I would just like to put this out there that, uh, you know, I mentioned this on Gary Vee. NFTs are not a scam. NFTs are the opposite of a scam. You know, when you look at, when, if you want to see a scam, you look at the art world. I mean, that's pretty much a scam. You have forgeries and fakes are rampant in the art world. Uh, they manufacture the provenance, the chain of title. They deposit those in the archives of storied institutions. I mean, the art, the art world is a joke. The connoisseurs who... Uh, va who validate or authenticate the paintings to determine whether they're real. It's very unscientific. Uh, but when you come to NFTs, the NFTs, because they're blockchain assets, uh, the blockchain verifies the origin, the authenticity of the, 
of the NFT, as well as the complete chain of title all the way up to the current owner, which is all transparent right on the blockchain. So the first of all, I'd like to say that you know, NFTs are not a scam. A lot of people have in their mind, and this is how it relates back to the early internet days, is that you have you know, new technology plus high valuations equals a scam. That's what people have in their mind, but that's not true. Just because there's high valuations on a new technology doesn't mean it's a scam. Now, certainly, there, I mean, there, some particular projects uh, could, be a, could be a scam. So, but not, the whole, but not the whole industry. So in the early internet days, I mean, there was, a, there was a lot of fun. Like people were afraid to enter their card, their credit cards on the internet to buy anything. And they, you know, the, the press and the news media was very negative about the internet. Uh, there was even that movie called The Net with Sandra Bullock, you know, spreading a lot of fear about the internet until you know, people got accustomed to it and then they realized the value of it and now it's an indispensable part of our lives it's it's like it's even hard to imagine what it was like before the internet yeah definitely so we we are we we are not in a fad of course um in nfts we need to understand which kind of projects and applications are the most valuable for the now so of course, Gary V, v Friends, it's, uh, for me, it's an incredible project about value because it brings value to real life. So what's your suggest for now to not, not, not invest because we are not financial advice here, but what's your suggest in recognizing which are the best projects and NFTs, which are the main characteristics that maybe they can have in common that can help us understand, okay, this is going to live the next f- 5, 10, 15 years. That's here to stay. If there are and if you've got any like informations to decide something like that yeah so first of all i mean what gary v is doing with, with the v friends i mean it's a new way to you know offer your services you know through and through an nft uh i mean which is very interesting i mean as far as nfts go that are you know into the future we have the we have the digital art and the collectible nfts i think those will will always be around but we also have the uh, utility <clears throat> NFTs as well, like for uh, you know ENS domain names, uh, you know virtual real estate. But uh, NFTs in the future, I believe, will will be tied to uh, physical objects. So the ownership of, of physical objects and intellectual property as well, like copyrights, uh, could be uh, could be placed in an NFT. So not only would you have a you know some type of collectible with respect to a copyright say of a of a particular music artist but you could also participate in the income from that artist that's generated by those copyrights so i see a lot of different exciting areas where the nfts could go all right so you think you say that the value of nfts comes from nfts they're they're something added to some to something physical so that's how we can recognize the real value not just something just digital but we can use nft as a tool to add more value more safety and everything else to something physical that's the way nft project should be and yes so basically well, disconnect yeah, i mean not just physical but like intellectual property as well right like other you know rights and even potentially you know uh, income streams all right so about intellectual property um, because you are also you were also a lawyer about regulations laws intellectual property and nfts is there something that we need to understand more that you think maybe you are ignoring now or is there something that we need to improve now yes so uh with respect to something like uh you know intellectual property nfts or fractionalizing uh non-bankable assets like for example you know like an expensive classic car or even a, a physical painting you can offer you know fractions of the painting as nfts uh generally something like that would be a security so an offering of those nfts would probably need to be done you know by underneath the regulations of the sec the securities and exchange commission 
So they have certain regular regulations for offerings, and there's also some exceptions, such as you know, Regulation D or or Reg A, uh, where you can do the offerings as well. So, but I mean, this hasn't been dis determined yet. Uh, the SEC hasn't really given any guidance yet on NFTs in general, but something that's going to um, securitize an asset or be an, an investment type of NFT will most likely, uh, in my opinion at least, uh, be deemed a security. All right. And from your personal perspective, from your opinion, are you satisfied with the actual level of regulations and what's happening in the NFT space? Or do you disagree with something that you say, oh, maybe that's too much for now. Or maybe that's something that needs to be regulated and understand more before we can do it. That maybe people, well, people I, are already I, doing, yeah. I mean, there are not too many regulations in the NFT space right now. I mean, I see, uh, I, I see there's a lot of, you know, uh, copy rampant use of copyrights, uh, name and likeness of celebrities in NFTs. I mean, for example, I was just doing some research for the book, and there's there's lots of, for example, Snoop Dogg NFTs using his name and likeness, and you know, most likely those weren't licensed uh, by Snoop Dogg, and you know, questions come up whether I mean that's a violation of his publicity rights. Now, not, not on the face of it, it depends on whether it's deemed art or it's, or it's more of a likeness. So uh, generally, the courts have used something called the transformative use test. Has the artist transformed the work enough to make it more of an independent work of art rather than just, you, just using someone's na uh, name and likeness to sell an NFT? So these questions you know, haven't really been determined and actually are more like more on a case by case basis. So, but these are just some of the issues uh, NFT creators need to be aware of. You can't just take any image off the internet and make an NFT out of that because that image is most likely uh, copyrighted. So uh, there are, you know, there are precautions and concerns that you need to take uh, when you're creating NFTs, especially when you're using other, other people's content. Yeah, so it's it's all about awareness. You just need to be aware of what you're doing because you've got in your head something more powerful than maybe you think that is going to evolve. It's very early. So that's important to have at least a level of awareness. So if there are right. any, any resources or sources that any artist or any creator involved can study, it will be definitely great. All right, uh, because you mentioned the book that you're reading, uh, with Q. Harrison. Would you like to tell me more about this book? Some spoilers, some news? Oh, sure. So actually, we're, we're currently writing it right now. And it's uh, planned to be out in October. And the book, uh, there's many aspects to the book. So we, it's called the NFT Handbook. And we, it's a, it's a how-to guide. We run you through step-by-step -step, uh, how to create and mint NFTs, you know, how to sell NFTs, and including how to market them and how to buy NFTs and how to build your collection. But on top of that, we have a whole chapter on the legal aspect of NFTs. We dive deep into the history of NFTs and we go into the future of NFTs. Uh, we, we also have a chapter on the uh, different NFT marketplaces as well. So I, I think that pretty much covers it. But it's a uh, it's very useful guide. You don't need any you know, technical knowledge. Uh, we help you get on the blockchain if you're not already on the blockchain. So I think you'll find it you know, really useful and a lot of uh, really interesting information there as well. Amazing. And it probably will be the first book about NFTs. I don't know, but I don't know if yeah, I... No, yeah, we're thinking the first book, you know, the first you know, published print book. Yeah, I mean, there's some self-published ones out there on Amazon right now. Uh, but this is the first one by a major publisher, yes. So it will be physical, but it, the book itself will also be an NFT? Oh, we are work. We are working on NFTs for the book. Yes. Amazing, amazing. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine that I can buy a book and I've got special rewards in the real life one day. Okay, so very interesting. And then, then we are going to talk more with the book also about also with Quarison in a future podcast and for the launching of this. Okay, and you, you've got so many projects that you do in the NFT space that. I've got questions, so I'm going, we're going to jump to another way or your project that I think is the one that you are working now the most, these powered up NFTs, right? Yes. 
So what do you do? What do you create with Power Up NFTs? Okay, so my uh, I created the Power Up NFTs to bring you know iconic brands uh, to the blockchain and create NFTs for you know iconic brands. So I started first one is uh, the Three Stooges. Uh, so we created uh, you know various NFTs for the Three Stooges, trying to incorporate uh, the, the humor into the NFTs. And we have those now available on OpenSea. Also uh, did NFT for uh, uh, Richie Valens. His, uh, hunt, his 80th birthday was uh, uh, recently last month. Uh, did an NFT for Richie Valens. And we have NFTs coming up for uh, celebrity chef uh, Jason Santos and also uh, basketball player uh, Trey Mann, who I mentioned earlier, he's uh, entering the uh, NBA draft uh, this year. Wow. And are you going to create, what kind of NFTs are the NFTs that you're creating? Is it just like collectibles or something else that you're holding on these NFTs? Yeah, these, uh, these are mainly collectibles, yes. All right. Um, because you mentioned OpenSea, that is the platform on which you are working, do you trust, it seems like that you trust OpenSea more than other platforms or in general, is there any advice about platforms that we are going to see in this year, in the next years? And why do you think that OpenSea is the biggest or the most trusted one? Just because they, they arrived before or there are other reasons that uh, you see in platforms and they say, okay, that's very good for my project. So that's something that could be more riskier now. Okay, I mean, I mean, regarding OpenSea, so it is, you know, currently the biggest marketplace. So there's a lot of potential uh, buyers there for your NFTs. But on top of that, it's really the, in my opinion, the easiest one to use as far as you know making NFTs and listing them. And also, you don't have to pay gas to mint your NFTs. You only have to pay a one-time uh, double gas fee to list your NFTs. Uh, so, I mean, it make, it's really makes it convenient, easy. They have, you know, they have great help guides, and you know, that's why, that's why I like OpenSea. All right. Um, about gas fees, what, what will be the improvement in gas fees now? Because we don't, we are not really understanding how gas fees is going to be cheaper, or in a way, if one day there won't be any more gas fees. What's your opinion about this? Well, at some point, uh, Ethereum is going to switch over to proof of stake, which is going to drastically reduce uh, the gas fees. I mean, that's going to be great. Uh, when that's going to happen, I'm not, I'm not sure. But if you look at, you know, Wax and Tezos and you know some other existing proof of stake uh, blockchains, then those gas fees or or transaction fees or whatever they call them are already really low. So. I think in the future, the gas fees are going to come down. And I'd also just like to add that, you know, a lot of people are concerned. I hear that, you know, NFTs are bad for the environment and, you know, using up a lot of energy. So, yeah, I just like to respond to that, you know, having done, you know, research for the book on this. So Bitcoin is, is the cryptocurrency that's really utilizing most of the energy. I mean, Bitcoin is it's proof of work and the cryptographic equations are getting harder and harder, requiring more and more energy in order to solve them. And the amount of energy Bitcoin is using up is, is uh, pretty significant. Now, Ethereum is also currently uh, proof of work as well. It's not, not as much energy is used as Bitcoin, but also NFTs are just a small portion of the entire uh, Ethereum network. And you know, other NFTs, like, as I mentioned on Wax, uh, is proof of stake and Ethereum is going to be switching to proof of stake. So I don't think there's a significant environmental impact being made by NFTs. I agree with you. Um, you say that not only NFTs, they are not bad for the environment, but I had on top that for me, there are some possibilities where NFTs can be good for the environment. For example, I was having a podcast with uh, a girl that she is creating digital clothes 
and she said the clothes are the most second are, are the second um, resource that is more pollut polluted from the environment. But thanks to digital clothes, you can switch also to an economy which, for example, influencers that buy their clothes and then they take a picture for Instagram, then they throw away. They can switch all this process by buying digital clothes. So in that in that for that example, like NFTs are good for the environment because they are creating this parallel market. And do you think what do you think about this? And do you think that there are other applications that we are going to see about NFTs that actually can state that NFTs are good for the environment? Well, I mean, I'm not familiar with with the digital clothes. That sounds really interesting. Now, uh, as far as you know, NFTs, you know, actually helping the environment. I mean, there's certain you know projects, and you know, uh, you know, charities or other organizations or NGOs out there, you know, that that are helping the environment that can issue NFTs as a way of you know raising funds for their organizations. I think that's that would be an interesting way to use NFTs to help the environment. All right. Right, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, okay, like I want, I want to switch topic because there is something from your past that uh, I saw that very, very touched me. It's about filmmaking because I started my career with a with a GoPro, let's say, or with with a camera. I documented my life since I was a child. I've got a lot of videos. So, about filmmaking, independent filmmaking. Uh, is there something that NFTs can do for this industry? If I, if imagine if I, if I was an independent filmmaker, how NFTs could help me? Okay, great. So say for example, like you're an independent filmmaker and you, and you want to finance your film. So instead of trying to reach out to you know people or other companies to try to get a finance, it, what you can do is you can issue NFTs, which will be collectibles with respect to the film, but also they could be an, an investment in the film as well. So uh, an NFT could represent a certain percentage of the profits in the film. And this could be a way that you could raise money for the film. Uh, the only thing is, though, is that you may need to do it under, you know, Regulation D or some other exception to the uh, SEC registration requirements. But it certainly, uh, it certainly can be done. And, and a lot of films are already financed under Reg D already. So... Uh, it would just be a great way to issue collectibles and get more people interested in financing your film through NFTs. Wow. So it's like crowdfunding pre-film and that you, you don't need to find a producer at the beginning. It's like the biggest challenge for every independent filmmaker to find a producer, especially when you are young at your first film. Right, right, right. It's like crowdfunding for film and issuing uh, you know, NFTs you know, collectibles, it's all tied together. Wow. So I don't need to come to LA for my, for my, for my next film, if I want to make one. Wow. And because you are there in the US, do you see, did, did you already see any specific companies or films or applications of this in the NFTs and filmmaking? Uh, no, not yet. No, I haven't seen anything yet. So I think the opportunity is there. Uh, I mean, people are definitely taking advantage of NFTs in the music space right now. You know, issuing music NFTs. Some, you know, major artists are are getting into that. Kings of Leon were the first ones to do it. So, uh, that's really uh, starting to take off. But as far as you know, uh, films, no, I haven't. You know, I'm not aware of that at this point. All right. It's interesting. We, we, we can come early and create something in this. You're, 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 yeah. you're making me envision something, some NFTs film. It could be so interesting. Maybe, maybe I, can, I can make the film that I never, I have, I never made thanks to NFTs. Right. Uh, all right. So I, um, before leaving, I want to switch to just a bunch, a few of other topics because you're really making so many projects in this space that for me is interesting how you are pushing the entire metaverse. So you have also, you're also the director of game credits. So we are talking about a gaming cryptocurrency. Would you like to tell me more and which are the evolution in these projects? Okay, yeah, I got involved in game credits around uh, 2015, uh, doing business development, you know, particularly in the area of fantasy sports. 
uh, got uh, an, entered in a deal with FanDuel for the uh, 2018 uh, FIFA World Cup. Uh, just been involved, you know, trying to promote, uh, you know, game credits for several years. Uh, and then game credits, I mean, there's a whole story behind it. Uh, you know, it was taken over uh, by some uh, bad actors. And then finally, uh, the, the uh, company, the game credits, uh, I mean, at one point, game credits was a top 15 on the coin market cap. Uh, but recently, I guess, I think um, in uh, last year, uh, game credits was uh, taken over by uh, uh, new management who's really uh, been doing a great job. They switched game credits over from uh, proof of work to uh, proof of stake on the Ethereum block. Uh, I'm sorry, they switched it over from uh, a Litecoin uh, derivative to over to uh, the Ethereum network uh -huh. and to create much more functionality for the coin and uh, and things are to, and they're getting into the NFT space and uh, things are going well. I have not been involved with uh, game credits under the new management team though. All right, it's interesting to me to touch the point of gaming because I think that under a consumer perspective, this is for me the first really real enabler of the metaverse. Do you agree to the fact that we are going to jump in the metaverse starting from gaming because it's something that we already seen in some sense, but we, we weren't so aware of the fact that it was the metaverse. Yes, uh, gaming is definitely, I mean, we, you know, there's, I mean, there's Fortnite. I mean, there's several games that have their uh, own metaverse, but I think, I mean, at some point, I don't know how far in the future, but I think the games will come together to create one big metaverse where each game would be just a separate part of that one encompassing metaverse. Yes, yeah, yeah I agree with you. Um, all right, um, just my last question for you is today, I like to close with all the topics that we talked about. What's your general call to action to the NFT world, to anyone involved in the NFT space? If you're yeah, called action, it's, uh, no, just, I mean, jump in. I mean, there's a lot of people who, you know, they're not on blockchain. They don't know how to, you know, make NFTs or even buy NFTs. I mean, I just say jump in, uh, just, you know, get your feet wet, you know, go to OpenSea. I mean, get our book. You'll learn all about, you know, how to make NFTs and get on the blockchain. Uh, and it's, you know, even if you make some mistakes, that's fine. I mean, it's it's a really fun space. There's a lot of cool people uh, doing a lot of cool things in the NFT space. So just say, you know, get involved. And if you have any questions, uh, just, you know, do some research and and you'll find your answers. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's good to hear because I'm going to create my first NFT in a few days. So I am oh, great. Yes. After a few months, now that I understand this kind of layer of value, I started with the podcast, but I say, OK, now I want to experiment because when you when you are at the buyer side or at the podcaster side, let's say it's it's a game. But when you are on the creator side, you really want to, especially for me that I am at the beginning because I don't I don't have a brand like I've just started. So I'm interested in seeing how people can uh, that's something very interesting that you said at the beginning is invest in my career from the beginning if they believe that there, there could be something related to NFTs. So yeah, that's my advice too. Just st study about NFTs and blockchain and then start your project, put it at the, at the price that you, that you want to, that you feel more comfortable with, that has got a meaning for you. And just as, some, as a lot of artists tell to me in my podcast, it's not important for how much you sell, but it's important like that you make sales, that you feel comfortable to the fact of uh, connecting your creator side, your artistic side to the business side. So if you, I think it's a huge opportunity for learning this NFT space because I see NFTs as a platform for everything that we saw until now. Yeah, I believe like the internet now, NFTs will be part of our, everyday life in the future i mean it's it's just this is really just the beginning days so there's still a lot left to be done so 
don't feel like you missed the boat uh, with NFTs. We're still just in the beginning. Yeah, definitely. I appreciate you came here today, Matt. Congratulations for what you're doing and see you soon. Keep doing what you're doing. Oh, great. It, it was, it's been a lot of fun. Thanks for having me.